welcome to the, uh, the first FITSIC class of the term. The plan is this term, is I'd like to do some more standing lessons in the weeks ahead, but today I'm going to review one of the earlier lessons, uh, one of the twist, twisting lessons, and see if I can clarify a few points. So, um, first thing is to please obviously come to sit towards the front edge of your chair and as you wait, make your way to the front edge of the chair, just take a moment to sense the shape of your spine. Uh, do, you, do you get a sense you're rounded back into your t-shirt? Again, that's very common. And, and the way really to help address that is to bring your attention down to the lower part of the tummy and think of pushing it out and down towards the pubic bone so that you come more onto the middle part of the sit bones as opposed to resting um, on the tailbone or the, the sacrum. Once you've uh, done that, then just bring your attention to the legs and the feet, just checking that your knees are above your heels. It can be very common just to be quite subtle to have the one knee slightly falling out or both. So check that the knees are above the feet and then also, just check, um, part of that is just checking you've not tucked the feet backwards because that closes the ankle joint. You want the ankles to be nice and neutral. And as you've set yourself up, then just see if you can sense maybe whether you're slightly more over onto one side compared to the other. So I'm right-handed. Um, my habit is definitely to be more over onto my left-hand side. So just notice whether that's the case and we'll see how it is towards the end of the class. Now, I'm going to mirror for the purposes of the lesson. And let's begin just by reviewing the kind of fundamental movement of side bending. And you'll remember the side bending, you, as you press into the right foot, for example, you think of lifting the right side of the pelvis so as to begin to pour the weight down into the left sit bone or to the left hip and then you let yourself come back onto the two sit bones. So we're looking for a side bending as opposed to a tilt. So you're just gently pressing into the right foot to see if you can lift the right side of the pelvis to pour the weight down into the left hand side and then come back to two sit bones. So the, the feeling is as if you're hitching up the hip to hold a baby on the side. It's that kind of action, pressing into the right foot to pour the weight down into the left hand side and then come back to centre. Another way of thinking about this movement that some people find easier to, ac to use to access is to think of your ribs sort of below the breast line or the nipple line these ribs here, just moving to the left and then coming back to centre. So the focus is on pushing or um, moving the ribs over to the left and then coming back to centre. But really we're trying to achieve the same um, different, uh, the same movement in terms of weight transfer so that the movement of the ribs brings your weight over onto the left hand side and then you come back. And then we also have thought about thinking of the left shoulder allowing that to move to the left and slight, slightly up to side bend over to the left. The so left shoulder going to the left and slightly up. And of course as that left shoulder is going to the left and slightly up it means you can perhaps see on the screen my right shoulder becomes lower than the left and then you come back to centre. So you can think of the pelvis or the ribs or the shoulder sort of initiating the movement but really as you get more used to the shape of the spine that this creates, this side bending action that you hopefully can begin just to initiate it from your centre. Good. 
And of course what we're doing here is trying to keep the head and eyes floating in the middle. And then pause and then let's try to the other side. So press down into the left foot to think of lifting the left side of the pelvis to allow the weight to transfer into the right hand side and then you come back to centre. So again just pressing into the left foot to lift the left side of the pelvis and then coming back to centre, but thinking of the head staying more or less in the middle. And then you can bring your attention more to the action of the ribs, this time moving over to the right hand side, and then coming back to centre. So again, the, you, you're feeling this transference of weight, hopefully clearly onto the right hand side, and then you can think of the right shoulder, just allowing that to go to the right and slightly up. And therefore the left shoulder lowering slightly as part of that movement. But the one thing to be careful of, and, and something I'm guilty of often, is um, sort of slightly lifting the shoulder towards the ear to initiate this movement and leading with the elbow. So really you're just letting the arm rest. It's the movement of the shoulder in space rather than trying to pull yourself over by engaging the neck muscles and the trapezius muscles. Good. And now that we've um, explored both sides, let's just try going from one side to the other, in pressing into the respective foot. So we're using the floor, the ground, to help us transfer the weight from side to side. Keeping the head more or less in the centre. And then the next time you come onto the left hand side, see if you can just pause there and notice how the right side of the pelvis is lifted, the ribs have shifted over to the left, your left shoulder is higher than your right and this is a place where you can breathe, keep the jaw nice and relaxed. If you wanted to, you could scan your horizon and then come back to centre. And then transfer the weight over onto the right hand side and again just pause there to make sure you're not holding the breath, the uh, jaw is free of tension and again if you wanted to, you could stay balanced on this one side and scan your horizon and then come back to centre. Now, uh, in previous lessons, if you just pause for a moment, we use this method to turn, to twist. So just to remind you, if you bring the weight over onto the left hand side once more and stay there and then bring your attention to your right knee and just begin to move the right knee a little bit forward and a little bit back. So straight forward and straight back, not, not out to the side, just coming straight forward and straight back. And you can feel it's as if the right sitting bone is polishing the seat of the, the chair, just moving forward and back. You can feel how the ribs are also moving, the spine is beginning to turn, good, and then come back to centre. Let's try that to the other side. So you bring the weight over onto the right hand side, so in our side bending position. Bring your attention to the left knee and then just think of moving the knee straight forward, keeping the, the foot in place and just sensing how the movement of the knee, of course, is involving the pelvis coming forward and back. And because the pelvis is coming forward and back, the ribs are beginning to do the same and, and the chest. Good. And then come back to centre. So that was one way we explored of turning. Um, another way that we looked at um, it was to stay with our weight on two sit bones. So not shifting, but staying on the two sit bones. And this time, think of your right knee going back 
and your left knee forward and then come back to centre. So we're staying on the two sit bones but right knee is going back, left knee forward and then if you allow the hands to slide, so my right hand is sliding back towards the pelvis, the left hand forward, you can begin to turn the, the chest, the shoulders, the head and eyes to look toward, on the horizon towards your right and then come back to centre. So it's a, a different way of turning. Here we're turning more around our centre axis to turn towards the right and then you come back to centre. And then we can try that to the left. So this time it'd be the left knee coming back, the right knee forward and the hand sliding to help you turn everything to look towards the left and then come back to centre. Good. And then just pause. So two ways of turning. One was bringing the weight on the left hand side and the other was staying on the two sit bones. But there is a third way, just to remind you, where this time you bring the weight onto the right hand side through side bending and this time you allow your left knee to go forward to turn towards the right and then you come back to centre. So once more you bring the weight on to the right hand side, let your left knee shoot forward as your right knee comes back to help you turn to look towards the right and then come back to centre. So each way of turning does something slightly different to the spine and it's good to be able to do all three, all three, because they have slightly different effects. If we just try that to the other side, so you'd bring the weight over onto the left hand side through side bending, stay there and then allow this time your right knee to go forward as your left knee goes back to turn towards the left. But you're turning around your left hip joint effectively and then you come back to centre. So just three ways of turning to have in your repertoire. But for most of this lesson I'd like to come back to the first, the first way. So um, please bring your weight over onto the left hand side and then take your right knee back and keep it back. Bring the weight onto two sit bones and then bring your left hand onto the right outer knee and bring the other hand, the right hand, either so I'm on a stool just so I can turn easily, but if you have a chair, you can take hold of the back of the chair or the seat of the chair. And and then once you're there, you stay there and just see if you can press your left hand and arm into the right knee as you push or pull on the other arm, uh, hand to help twist you a little bit further towards the right and then you come back to centre. So um, once more, bring the weight first onto the left hand side, take the right knee back, keep it back then quite consciously bring the weight, allow the weight to come onto two sit bones. Bring your left hand onto the right outer knee, the other hand behind you. And then just really focus on the left arm, the, the straight arm that's on the right knee. And then press the palm into the knee to help bring that left shoulder forward as you push or pull on the other arm to take the right shoulder back. Now, one thing I've noticed with working with people in the studio is when they press on the left arm, it can be what they often like to do is actually bend the arm to try and pull the shoulder forward. So, but what that does, it uses different muscles. So if you really, it's like you're swimming, pressing water away from you. You're trying to keep the arm straight to press the knee away from you to allow that left shoulder to come forward and then you come back to centre. So 
let's just try that to the other, other side. So you initiate this by bringing the weight on to the right hand side. Stay there. Take your left knee back in space. Allow the weight to come back onto the two sit bones. <clears throat> Bring your right palm onto the left outer knee. The other hand takes hold of the chair behind you. And then keep the right arm straight. Don't let it bend. As you press the palm into the knee, as you push or pull on the other hand, to help bring your right shoulder forward and take the left shoulder back. And you can perhaps feel, if you're managing to, to do that, you can do it a few times, the pressing or the pushing, and you can feel how the, these movements of the shoulder blades meet in a very particular part of your spine and then come back to center. Just take a rest for a moment. And then uh, once you've had a rest, once more bring the weight over onto the left hand side, take the right knee back, allow the weight to come onto your two sit bones, bring the left hand onto the right outer knee, other hand behind you. And then stay here and once more press the left palm into the right outer knee as you push or pull on the right hand. And see if you can feel how your left shoulder is not just coming forward, it's also coming up slightly towards the ear. And therefore your right shoulder is going backwards around the spine and slightly down and if you can find that allowing the left shoulder to come forward and up the right shoulder back and down you can perhaps see from the screen what it's doing it's not just twisting me it's actually making me get taller i can feel it creates an upward push into the spine that's helping to make my neck longer, the crown of the head moving towards the ceiling. So just doing a few more, just being really kind to yourself, so not forcing anything, just checking the jaw is nice and relaxed, good. And then leave that alone and come back to centre. And just notice when you come back to centre, so I can, it's like, it's like that part of my spine that we've just been twisting and lengthening is suddenly lit up in my atten attention. Um, and it's really that part of the spine, the thoracic part of the spine, that we really, is really useful to access for walking, for any kind of racket sports, that kind of thing, where we're beginning to move the arms from the, that part of the spine. Now, let's just go back into the same position. So you bring the weight over onto the left-hand side. Take your right knee back. Allow your weight quite deliberately to come back onto the two sit bones. Bring your left palm onto the right outer knee, other hand behind you. And then once more, return to pressing the palm into the knee to allow that left shoulder to come forward and up as the right shoulder is going back and down. See if you can feel where it meets in the spine. Just a few more movements. Can you feel that lengthening action taking place? And then pause as you are. And now could you change the movement so this time your right shoulder is coming forward and up and your left shoulder is going back and down. So right shoulder you're letting come forward and up and the left shoulder back and down. And again, what I feel, maybe it's the same with you, it may be different, I feel that this twist causes me to shorten the spine it causes me to round the spine a little bit 
as part of these movements. I can feel a little rolling towards the back of my sit bones. If I don't fight the movement, if I kind of follow where it wants to go, just exploring that and then pause and then see can you go back to the first variation so left shoulder forward and up uh, right shoulder backwards and down can you feel it creates a very different direction in the movement of the spine more of a, a lengthening up towards the ceiling good and then pause Please leave that alone, come back to centre, just to take a rest. And then let's see if we can go to the other side. So you bring the weight over onto your right hand side, take your left knee back and keep it back, and then allow the weight to return to the two sit bones. Bring your right palm onto the left out knee other hand behind you and stay there i'm just showing you from the side and then see can you press a straight arm keeping it straight the right palm into the left out knee as you push on the on the left hand to see can you allow that right shoulder to come forward and up towards the ear as the left shoulder goes back and down and again so you feel if you're not fighting the movement if you're allowing yourself to go with it it's creating this not just a twist but a, a length, lengthening of the curves of the spine as it pushes the head up towards the ceiling just a few more, okay, not forcing anything. It's quite a powerful movement, this, for certain vertebrae. And then pause, again as you are, and see, can you change the pattern? So now it's your left shoulder coming forward and up as your right shoulder is going backwards and down. And again, rather than trying to keep your spine absolutely um, straight can you if you give in to the movement can you feel how it creates this time as though the head is being um, just gently pressed down um, as the spine is turning it creates a different action in the spine and then once you've just explored that return to the first variation so you're pressing into a straight right arm to bring that right shoulder forward and up as the left shoulder goes backwards and down. And can you feel, oh, it just feels <laughs> it's like having a back scratch, <laughs> scratching that part of the spine, trying to get it moving. Good. Once you've uh, explored that, please leave it alone, come back to centre. And then just test what's it like to reach an arm. Can you, you get a sense of the, oh, that possibility of the, moving the arms is actually because you're now thinking of the movement of the arm coming from the spine as opposed to keeping the spine very still and lifting the arms forward and up. So just connecting the arms into the spine. Now, um, please come back when you're ready onto your left hand side, so through side bending. Take your right knee back in space, keep it there. Allow the weight to deliberately come transfer back onto the two sit bones. Bring your left hand once again onto the right out knee, other hand behind you. And then return again to Pressing the, the palm into the knee as you push or pull on the right hand to allow your left shoulder to come forward and up and your right shoulder backwards and down. So you're combining the two directions, effectively, the two variations. So you, you can allow the spine to lengthen 
and shorten as part of these movements and then begin to turn the head and eyes to whichever shoulder is coming forward. See if you can just turn the head and eyes to whichever shoulder is coming forward, allowing the spine to move as part of this. Good. And then please leave that alone and come back to centre just to take a rest. And then um, please bring your weight over onto the right hand side. So through our side bending action, stay there, take your left knee back, keep it back. Deliberately allow the weight to come onto the two sit bones. Bring your right palm onto the left outer knee, other hand behind you. And then begin to Combine the two variations that we explored with the shoulders. As one shoulder comes forward, the other goes back. And you can see that I'm allowing my spine to respond to this. So it's curling and lengthening as part of the, this movement of the shoulders. And once you've found that possibility, begin to turn the head and eyes to look towards whichever shoulder is coming forward. This nice easy movement. Okay. Checking the jaw is relaxed is relaxed and that you're not holding holding the breath. And and just to do a few more of these as you're becoming I'm familiar with the pattern that the spine is making as a result of what we're thinking about with the shoulders you can actually begin to actually initiate this from the middle from the middle please leave that alone and carefully come back to center Absolutely one of my favourite lessons, this, it's uh, all over, <laughs> all over um, MOT for the, for the spine, which is why I chose it for the first lesson of the, of the term. Um, please come onto your left hand side again, take your right knee back, keep it back, allow the weight to come back onto the two sit bones. Once more, bring your left palm onto the right outer knee, other hand on the chair behind you. And then just see, so you're staying turned, can you lift the left shoulder towards the head and tilt the head towards the shoulder and then let that release. So you're just shrugging the shoulder up towards the ear and the ear towards the shoulder and release. Can you feel again? Oh, it's also the spine is part of that movement as we explored before, if you're allowing it to move. And then see if you can stay with the shoulder and the ear glued together. And then keeping them glued together, think of just layering them together and lifting them together. The, you're lowering them together and of course when you lower them it causes the back to round if you're allowing it to. And as you lift them, keeping them together, it's causing those back, the ribs at the back to sort of deeply move in towards the spine as a, as a bit shifting weight forwards and backwards on the sit bones. Good. Please leave that alone and come back to centre. And then let's try that to the other side. So you uh, deliberately um, sort of side bend over to the right, 
take your left knee back and keep it back. Allow the weight to come onto the two sit bones. Bring your right palm onto the left outer knee, other hand behind you. And then just try a few movements of bringing the right shoulder and the right ear closer together. And then stay with them glued together and then see if you can lower them together and lift them together. So I've turn to give you a side view so hopefully you can see if you're managing to keep them glued together how it's causing a rounding and an extension of a particular part of the of the spine weight is shifting to the back part of the pelvis and to the front part of the pelvis as part of this movement Please leave that alone and come back to centre. Such a strange variation really, but uh, when you begin to understand the reasoning behind it, you can see how it kind of compels, invites movement from an area that um, for many gets a little bit sort of um, uh, un unclear. We have an even stranger variation to come. <laughs> So please bring your weight over onto the left hand side again. Take your right knee back, keep it back. Bring the weight over onto the two sit bones. Bring your left palm onto the right outer knee, other hand behind you. And then just turn to your comfortable right. So turning to your comfortable right. And make sure that your, your nose and your chin are more or less in line with your breastbone. So we're not turning the head as far as we can. Just keeping that head or nose in line with the breastbone as your turn. And then imagine that your chin is resting on a shelf. And that you're just going to slide the chin forward and then draw the chin back towards the throat. So you slide the chin forward and then think of the chin coming back towards the throat. Now, if you just pause for a minute, undo, just so you can have a look, just wanted to explain something. So, um, as I, there's, there's two ways of doing this really, one is, as I slide the chin forward, can you see I'm rounding the back and shortening? And when the chin comes closer to the throat, I'm lengthening through the, the back of the, the neck. So that's the first way. Let, let's have a go at that, that first. So you bring the weight over onto the left hand side, take your right knee back, Allow the weight to come onto the two sit bones. Bring the left hand onto the right out and the other hand behind you. Turn the head to the right, just in line with the breastbone. And think of sliding the chin forward, letting your chest collapse effectively. And then as you bring the, the chin back towards the throat, pushing out the tummy to lengthen through the spine. So chin just sliding forward. You can feel how the back of the head tilts back. As the chin comes closer to the throat, the spine lengthens. So just a few more of these sort of slightly peculiar pecking movements. Good. And then pause. Leave that alone and come back to centre. Um, the, you don't need to know this, but um, there's a very particular structure of the, how the skull rests on the top of the, of the spine. Um, the skull effect on the top vertebrae, it sort of rests on little rockers. And this nodding movement often gets a little bit jammed, jammed with people, this um, um, possibility of 
moving, nodding the head on top of the spine. So partly it's exploring that possibility. Um, please bring your weight over onto the right hand side. Stay there as you slide your left knee back. Allow the weight to very deliberately come onto the two sit bones. Bring your right palm onto the left outer knee, other hand behind you. Turn to your comfortable left. So making sure the head, uh, the nose is in line with the breastbone. And see, can you slide the chin forward, looking forward, and then bring the chin back towards the throat. So allowing yourself to shrink effectively as the chin comes forward and get taller as the chin comes back to the throat. We're just doing this a few times. You can see our weight is pretty much staying on the two sit bones as we're exploring this, this movement. Good. And then come back to centre. And then just pause for a moment when you come back to centre. just want to explain the other way. So start in the same way, you would turn to the right, turning the head. And now this time, as the chin goes forward, I think of breathing into the upper part of the chest. And then as the chin comes back to the throat, lengthening through the neck. But can you see the difference here is I'm allowing the shift of weight over onto the right hand side and lengthening as I expand the spine, going to an extension as the chin comes back to the throat, my weight is shifting back onto the left sit bone. So rather than this shrinking and growing, we're also including a shift of weight through the spine. So um, let's have a go at that. So you, Bring the weight over onto the left hand side, stay there, take your right knee back in space, bring the left palm onto the right outer knee, other hand behind you, so if you allow the weight to come onto two sit bones, turn the head and eyes in line with your breastbone. Now this time, as you move the chin forward, Think of really breathing into the upper part of the chest so you've allowed the weight to shift onto the right sit bone. And as you bring the chin straight back on the shelf towards the throat, you can feel that lengthening in the back of the neck and the shift of weight onto the left hand side. So going forward, expanding the chest. So you're perched a little bit more precariously on the right sit bone as you bring the chin back towards the throat, you've rounded the back to come on to the left sit bone. It's going forward and backwards, forwards and backwards. Good. Just one more time, forward and backwards. Good. And then leave that alone and come back to centre. And then let's try that to the other side. So you allow the weight to come onto the right hand side. Take your left knee back, bring the weight over onto the two sit bones. Bring your right palm onto the left outer knee, other hand behind you. And now bringing the head in line with the breastbone, can you slide the chin forward on your imaginary shelf but breathe into the upper part of the chest. You have to let the, the tummy out to bring the weight onto the left sit bone. And then you bring the chin straight back towards the throat to round back onto the left, right sit bone. It's going forward, breathing into the chest and back a few times. Feel this shift of weight from one sit bone to the other as the spine changes shape. Good. And then leave that alone and come back. I told you it was a, a, a weird var variation. <laughs> now, um, please, we're going to use that, um, use that, develop it now into the next movement. So please 
Bring your weight over onto the left sit bone. Take your right knee back, keep it there. Allow the weight to come onto the two sit bones. Bring your left hand onto the right outer knee, other hand behind you. And now can you think of, it's almost like you're going to bring the forehead towards your right pocket, around the back, and then think of just gently looking up as you bring the weight over onto the right sit bone to arch the back. So you're looking down, think of the forehead not going to the floor, but as if you wanted to look deep into yourself. And then think of just gently looking up as you expand the chest, pushing out the tummy. So we're rounding and arching the spine in this turn, turn position. So that the looking up is not just happening in the neck muscles, it's really involving a shift of weight and a change of shape in the spine. Okay. Leave that alone, come back to centre. And then let's just explore that to the other side. So you um, bring the weight onto the right hand side. Take your left knee back, keep it back, bring the weight over onto the two sit bones. Take your right palm to the left outer knee, other hand behind you. And then think of looking down, so you're rounding the back to bring the weight over onto the right hand side. And then to look up, think of pushing out the tummy, expanding the chest to look up. You don't have to see the ceiling, just wherever's comfortable. So you're rounding to bring the weight over onto the right sit bone, pushing out the tummy as you expand the chest to look up. Just see if you can involve your spine, the pelvis, in the looking down and the looking up. Good. And then please leave that alone. Come back to centre. Let's take a rest for a moment, checking, the, just noticing the, how your weight is distributed on the two sides. And then um, one, um, maybe just have a look at this first. So we're going to once more turn to the right, turn to the right, and I'll show this from behind. You stay turned to the right, and then think of bringing the one ear towards the one shoulder and then the other ear towards the other shoulder. So just going from side to side, but can you see it's actually a big movement for the spine and the ribs as opposed to keeping the middle still and just whoop, tilting the head from side to side. So let's have a go. Uh, bring the weight over onto the left hand side, take your right knee back, allow the weight to come onto your two sit bones, take your left palm to the right outer knee, other hand behind you. And then can you think of bringing one ear towards one shoulder and then the other ear towards the other shoulder. So one ear towards one shoulder and then towards the other shoulder. But can you feel actually it's really the whole of the spine that makes the movement of the ear towards the shoulder possible and it um, makes it easier if you're allowing this movement to take place in your centre. So shifting, changing the shape of our middle to do this. Good. And then please pause and leave that alone. And then we'll, we'll um, explore that to the other side. So you bring the weight over onto the right hand side, stay there, take your left knee back, allow the weight to come onto the two sit bones. Take your right palm to the left outer knee, other hand behind you. You're staying tall. Good. And then think of allowing the ear 
one ear to one shoulder and one ear towards the other shoulder. There's a lot of movement happening through the spine and the ribs to facilitate this. And then pause, leave that alone, and come back to centre, just to take a, a rest. And uh, just whilst you're resting in, I'll just show you the final va variation. So you'd turn once more to your right, and then I'm going to ask you to look up a little bit towards the ceiling. Don't have to see the ceiling, but just looking up. And then once you're looking up, think of your nose moving from side to side, but allowing the spine to be part of that. Part of that. So making an arc in space, but as opposed to it just co coming from the neck, it's actually the whole of the spine that's involved. Take it easy. <laughs> um, so, um, please bring the weight onto the left hand side. Take your right knee back. Allow the weight to come onto your two sit bones. Bring the left hand onto the right out and the other hand behind you. And then just think of lifting the chest to look up a little bit towards the ceiling. And then think of your nose or eyes looking left and right on the ceiling but allowing the spine to facilitate this it's not just the neck far from it it's everything everything that's doing this movement pause please leave that alone come back to center and then We'll do that to the other side. So you bring the weight over onto the right hand side, take the left knee back, deliberately let your weight come back onto the two sit bones, take your right palm to the left out and the other hand behind you. Stay there. Think of looking up to so expand or lift the chest to look up and then stay there and begin to think of just as though the tip of the nose is painting a little line left and right on the ceiling but that left and that line is being painted from your spine on your pelvis rather than just the the neck oh it feels so nice doesn't it to get that that lovely lovely movement in the in the spine that lengthening action it, Please leave it alone, come back to centre. Just notice how you feel when you come back to centre. And just by way of a test really, just bring, bring the weight over onto one side and then over onto the other side. Is that side bending transference of weight a little bit more accessible, a little bit more fluid as a result of all that movement we've been introducing into the spine. So um, I'll end the class there um, but when you do come to leave the class um, and in the in the day ahead and enjoy your walking just see just notice if you can this possibility of in your walking this rotation, rotation of the thoracic spine, you'll see many people walking with absolutely no movement happening, happening there at all. And um, you'll see some people who are walking where the only movement in the arms is from the uh, elbows. Um, just see if you can allow that sense of freedom in the thoracic part of the spine. Thank you very much everyone, see you next week.